Hi, it's Peter Nixon recording from my studio in Discovery Bay in Hong Kong. And uh, a lot of people during this pandemic are having strange dreams. And I wondered, what did you dream about last night? This is a story about a dream that I had and a little bit of research and a little bit of uh, interesting history for you. I found myself waking up dreaming about my cottage in Canada, just north of Montreal, a beautiful family property that has been in the family for over a hundred years. And in the property, there's a famous red Chesterfield. And uh, it's particularly special. It's a four seater, big winged Chesterfield, which at the time when they came out a hundred years ago, were considered one of the most popular uh, furniture design icons that you could purchase. And uh, there has always been a story passed down in the family that this was Lady Astor's Chesterfield. Lady Astor, of course, uh, the Astor family, famous for the Titanic. But I never really knew the story. So I, I set about, when I became the uh, latest owner of this family property, to investigate the story of Lady Astor and the Red Chesterfield. So I googled, as we do nowadays, I googled who is Lady Astor. And the first one to pop up was uh, Nancy. Uh, she's actually a, one of the large family members. There's a lot of Astors uh, spread around the world, mostly US and UK. And she, interestingly, was the first lady to be to take her seat in the House of Commons in the UK. She also was quite good at uh, retorts and is famous for having told Winston Churchill, if I were married to you, I'd put poison in your coffee. To which Churchill replied, if I were married to you, I'd drink it. <laughs> anyway, uh, very interesting story. It doesn't seem that she was the one that was on the red Chesterfield. So I continued my search and uh, the next one I found was uh, the mother of the of John Jacob Astor who died in the Titanic. As she was the most famous lady in top society of New York at the turn of the last century and her family wealth today is estimated to be in the region of about a hundred billion dollars. The family wealth was made in real estate and opium and uh, fur trading. Uh, and interesting, even some obvious with the opium trade connections and shipping to China. Uh, but I thought, considering that the cottage was only built in 1923 and uh, she died in 1908, then unlikely that she would have been the Lady Astor. Uh, that was on the Red Chesterfield. So I decided I'd investigate a little bit more about the famous John Jacob Astor. He's actually the fourth one. Uh, he's the was the richest man to die on the Titanic. Everybody knows the story. He had been the one to inherit most of the family wealth. Uh, he also had a weakness for beautiful women. Uh, he, coming from a large family of wealthy people, the family background was actually from uh, the uh, Germany and Italy. And the Waldorf Astoria, which is a famous property, actually was a family feud because it was his cousin Waldorf that had the Waldorf and he had the Aster the Astoria, named after the Astor family. And they couldn't really work things out, so they put them together to create the Waldorf Astoria that is uh, so famous today. Perhaps one of his most beautiful hotels that John Jacob Astor IV built was the Knickerbocker in Times Square, which at the time, uh, going back to that uh, time in history, which is a long time ago, was a lot of money then. Built in 1901, it was only $2.50 a night to spend 
a night there, but it was $500 a plate to eat in the dining room. And if you wanted to eat, you were only served on solid gold plates. None of this uh, porcelain stuff. It was a beautiful hotel. My original research for this presentation was done when I was presenting at the uh, John Jacob Astor Ballroom at the new St. Regis Hotel in Singapore. Uh, and we also had dinner in the Lady Astor dining room. But as I asked around, not a lot of people knew why, why was it called the St. Regis? So I investigated that as well. The St. Regis uh, was John Jacob Astor's, uh, he considered it his finest achievement. It's famous, the first one was built in New York City. It was the richest hotel in America when it was built. And it was also apparently the place where they invented the Bloody Mary drink, which uh, Canadians seem to like to consider their own. As I continued to investigate the family, I found that their cottage, the family compound, the place where you would escape out of a hot New York City and Manhattan, back in the days when there was no air conditioning, people always went either up into the hills or into the Lakes District to cool off. And St. Regis Hotel is named after Upper St. Regis Lake, which is in the Adirondacks. And the Astor family would gather there every summer and their favorite uh, memories were always at the cottage, which happened to be just uh, near the Roosevelt's cottage, President Roosevelt fame. So my uh, investigation of the Red Chesterfield and Lady Astor extended then to John Jacob Astor's first wife. Uh, they married in 1891 when Jack was just 23, Jack, John Jacob Astor was called Jack. Uh, she was a socialite, active in London, but uh, clearly didn't uh, appreciate Jack's uh, womanizing. And they divorced in 1909. Uh, she later married Thomas Lister, who was the fourth Baron Ribblesdale, and she then became known as Lady Ribblesdale and, uh, and lived her life in the UK. And as you know, the story of the Titanic, you know that uh, John Jacob Astor went down with the ship, but his uh, pregnant wife survived. Uh, so Jack divorced Ava in 1909, actually a little bit less than a year before he married Madeline. It was such a scandal at the time that the uh, Episcopalian church refused to do the marriage vows. She was only 18 years old and 29 years younger than Jack when they got married. <clears throat> the scandal was uh, so bad in the social circles that it forced the couple to bide their time in Europe. But once she got pregnant, they decided it was time to come back to New York City and leave Europe. And that's when they decided to hop on the Titanic. And... Uh, the rest we know is history. The Titanic at the time, first class cabin was $4,000 a night, which would be equivalent to about $50,000 a night in today's currencies. And uh, she had a manservant, a maid, a nurse, and their dog, Kitty. When the Titanic went down on April 15th, 1912, uh, it hit the iceberg just before midnight on the 14th, sank on the 15th, 1,635 died, which was most of the people on board. And after it went down and she survived, uh, Madeline actually remarried twice, but died at uh, the young age of just 46 years of age of heart trouble, apparently. Uh, so then the question comes back. Uh, I narrow it down to four possible ladies. The cousin, Nancy, first woman to take her seat in the UK Parliament, uh, didn't seem to be that lady, asked her. It didn't seem to be the mother because she seemed to have passed away before the Red Chesterfield kind of appeared on the scene. 
it doesn't seem to be the first wife because she seemed to have also left him before it appeared. So my thinking is it's probably the second wife. So I continued to do my research and I found out that the Titanic became famous at the time as the ship of widows because so many men let the women and children go first. The men died in the freezing cold waters, but uh, a lot of those who were rescued were widows, the wives of the, the men who had passed away. And the stories of the survivors was that uh, they would often just wake in the middle of the night and, and feel shuddering cold and fright as if they were still in that uh, North Atlantic freezing that night of the sinking. And as you know, also from the Titanic movie, the band played Nearer My God to Thee on board as the ship was sinking. And they said many survivors also uh, would, would break down whenever they heard that hymn in church. And uh, she also was famous as all of the others for taking sleeping pills because the only way they could get over it was uh, to medicate, to self-medicate. So what did you dream about last night? An interesting question, because I don't know the answer, but I do have a view that it must have been, here's, here's how I will uh, guess my point in history. It's only three hours drive from the upper St. Regis Lake, where the Astors had their cottage. My thinking is that Jack seduced Madeline on this uh, red Chesterfield. She fell in love uh, as an 18 year old girl with an old man, uh, sadly. And uh, after surviving the Titanic, and inheriting all the family property, there was the red Chesterfield. And every time she saw it, I imagine she would have PTSD and shudders and thoughts. And so how did it end up at our cottage? Interesting question. I subsequently found out that my grandmother's sister was the nurse for Madeline, Lady Astor. And I guess they must have been talking and Lady Astor would have asked my grandmother's sister, can I reward you for your great service by giving you this uh, fantastic piece of furniture? And you could move it to your cottage, away from our cottage, and uh, then it would be yours. So interestingly, it's actually closer from Upper St. Regis Lake to my cottage than it is from Upper St. Regis Lake back to New York City, where the uh, family had their compound in the city. So that's my, my uh, guess. And I leave that thought with you as you go into the weekend and ask, what did you dream about last night? There's a link here if you want to follow up some interesting uh, thoughts about globalization and the world we're in today, and how that kind of ties into the last period of globalization before the pandemic. The biggest one was that era during John Jacob Astor's time. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again.